we had a an underwater robot operating autonomously in Loch Ness. So this is with colleagues here at Oxford and, and in the National Oceanography Centre. So this was an underwater robot collecting data from a network of sensors. Over the years, I've deployed autonomous robots in a range of, of different places, quite a, kind of an extreme range, I think. So uh, some of my earliest work looked at deploying autonomous mobile robots, so wheeled robots in, in indoor settings. And there we put robots into offices, uh, doing kind of security and patrol tasks, and also into to care homes or hospitals where the robots were supporting nursing staff. And these robots operated autonomously for, for months at a time with no expert human intervention. So they were kind of truly autonomous, but and capable of doing a kind of small range of different tasks. Uh, since then, deployed robots all over the place. So we had a an underwater robot operating autonomously in Loch Ness. So this is with colleagues here at Oxford and, and in the National Oceanography Centre. So this was an underwater robot collecting data from a network of sensors. Uh, we've had robots operating in radioactive environments, so operating on the around the outside of the jet fusion reactor in Cullen down the road, as well as doing inspection tasks in Sellafield, so autonomously inspecting the Calder Hall uh, power plant under decommissioning. And we've also deployed robots into kind of forests, into grasslands, uh, kind of across the board, really. So, you know, everything from care homes to, to nuclear reactors, I've, I've, I've had robots operate autonomously in those areas. So I, I think when I talk about robotics and AI, and I hope you've got a sense of that in, in the other answers, I, I do try to be kind of quite grounded and I, I think it's important to demystify uh, artificial intelligence and kind of autonomous robotics. These are important and exciting tools that we will use as society in, in the future, but we shouldn't get carried away with the hype. We shouldn't over ascribe to them capabilities or even identities that are just irrelevant. These are software and hardware tools and we shouldn't get, yeah, we shouldn't suddenly think they're the solution to everything. Um, there are a number of limitations in these kind of technologies. And I, I think for me, communicating both the excitement and the capability, what you can do, as, as well as, you know, what they can't do and what you should kind of be cynical about. And, you know, I think people, I'd like people to walk away from my talks uh, having a better, more realistic understanding of the exciting technologies and the future we're going to have with them.